Greetings from the European Parliament studio in Strasbourg. My name is Ilze Nagula and today we're going to talk about right to die, about euthanasia. Uh, and it's only allowed in four countries in the European Union and one of them is Belgium. And that's why today I'm joined by Belgian MEP Asita Kanko. Very nice to have you here. You. And she's from European Conservatives and Reformists Group. And from Latvia, I'm joined by Ivars Ieps, who is from the, here in the Parliament from the Renew uh, Europe Group. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, Belgium was only the second country in the world to legalize uh, euthanasia uh, after Netherlands. How did it happen? Because I've read that it was some sort of a political accident, actually. Oh, no, actually, um, this is such an important and sensitive topic. And I know it's a very difficult topic for people to discuss about, but for those who need it, it's a matter of human dignity. So in Belgium, the debate was very intense as well, but Belgium legalized euthanasia only after the uh, healthcare systems were ready for it, when people could be sure that you could have the best palliative uh, care before we went to the euthanasia contest. And also, it's in a very strict, um, legal framework. For example, what we define as euthanasia is when someone who is terminal, terminal ill and uh, having unbearable suffering requests actively to end his or her life and the person who is going to actively help uh, end the life is a third person who is a trained phys physician and within a strict legal uh, framework. Uh, later, this was extended also to uh, younger uh, people, but under most, much stricter conditions. And my party, the NVA, contributed to make sure that if a, a, a teenager or a child wants to end its life because of unbearable suffering, repeatedly ask for it, that the parents have a veto right. That's, all, for example, one thing. Second, that uh, all the involved physicians, psychologists, parents, school environment are actually having psychological guidance. And so there are all kinds of strict measures that are put together. And of course, we need as a society to not uh, make this a first resort when there is a problem, but a last resort when human dignity depends on it and actually accompany people until the end. But there have been only very few cases when uh, children or minors uh, below the age of 18 have requested it, right? Or when they were allowed to do it? Yeah, I, I think we all hope that many children will not need mm -hmm. euthanasia. But uh, when th such a law is always painful, but when someone is in the situation, it's better to have it because it's then to have the, the possibility to choose because it's, uh, I repeat, it's about human dignity, but we should not leave it by chance and we should not also be in a rush. So I understood that countries uh, need to improve the palliative care before they can even go to that stage and that is what we did in Belgium. Uh, also at the beginning. Do you feel that the uh, situation uh, regarding euthanasia is changing in Europe? Because Netherlands were the first ones, Belgium second, then uh, Luxembourg, now Spain joined this summer. Also Portugal tried but didn't succeed. Well, Europe is getting increasingly humane and rational in that sense. But I think that the link that my distinguished colleague just mentioned is extremely important for many countries, including my own, Latvia. This is this link be between the quality of the health care and the quality of the palliative care on the one hand. And of, on the other hand, this is this legal regulation of the euthanasia. Well, just like was said, if you have no decent palliative care being mm -hmm. provided by the health system, it would be somehow probably even immoral to introduce immediately the euthanasia. But at the same time, of course, we are moving in the same direction because we all know that this is basically a, a, an important task of every politician to avoid unnecessary suffering and to provide a solution when, when there is an intolerable suffering which a person can avoid. But do you think it just depends on the sort of uh, situation in the health care? The political will would be there? Well, I think that this is, uh, to my mind, also a certain development in the culture. Because, well, this uh, approach, which has been chosen by Spain, by the Netherlands, by, by Belgium, it very much on, depends on the rationality and secularism in politics. Uh, Spain, as you probably know, is an extremely religious 
in a positive sense, a Catholic country, which nevertheless uh, legalized euthanasia because they are separating those issues. My religious belief is not at the basis of what should influence politics. In our societies, let's say a little bit more to the east in, in the European Union, the perception is different. As far as I understand, Poland is the only country where this, the euthanasia is not just not allowed, but it is even prohibited, uh, banned in the law, uh, which is also probably going to change somewhere in the future, but not in the nearest future. But you see that there are also changes in, in Belgium, meaning that uh, the number of cases of uh, euthanasia have increased over the years, mm -hmm. and which is interesting, more in Flanders, where you come from, rather than in, in the French-speaking part. Why is that? I, I think what we read uh, when we look at the figures, there was, for example, a, a drop in 2020. It is. The, it is indeed, it has indeed increased. I think it's linked also to the aging population and to the fact, of course, that the law does exist and can be used. And over time, people also learn how to use, um, it, it becomes more part of, uh, of, the, of the culture to use uh, this uh, possibility because it does exist. And also professionals did learn that there is more, um, uh, there have been more time over to, to understand how the law is working and how to implement it. So I think that has also contributed. But we do also have a very aging uh, population. And if you look at, the, at uh, the, the, the data of demographic data in Belgium, of course, you will see that there is a majority of Flemish people. So it's also, uh, I, I think, more uh, correl you will have a correlation so between, uh, yeah. Yeah, statistically, you will see also the, the, that link. But it does not mean that people are uh, oversimplifying and considering euthanasia to be uh, an alternative to good palliative care. And we also think that one should never promote euthanasia. Of course, you need to promote care in society. And there are always forces that want to extend the, the, the law again. But we are really very careful that you don't need to exaggerate such a, such a, a sensitive law about uh, live, life and death. Uh, but now there is a discussion starting about euthanasia for people who have dementia and how can we have a legal framework for that and it's still at its starting phase and I think by next week there will there will be discussion starting about this I don't I don't know when it will be concluded because it's much more difficult in their case to to make that decision right because they might not be mentally able to do that right well I, I think you know people sometimes people who are uh, who have uh, dementia have also not always have uh, dementia. So I have, for example, uh, one of my best friends, and it's really uh, always painful for me to speak about it. One of my best friends, uh, he's like almost 80 years old, and uh, he has always been a mentor to me. And then recently he told me, look, I know how I want to die, and I want to go to Switzerland, and I want to organize a dinner, and I want you to be present, and that is how I want to say goodbye. And I was like, why do you want to die? You, I forgot that he was actually 80 and that, you know, he has twice my, uh, my age already. And I was like, oh my God, so one day you are going to die. I'm really going to miss you. Please don't yet and let's just... And he was like, we need to speak about this because this is how I want to die. And I'm worried if one day I have dementia, I want my friends, my friends to remember what I wanted. So people actually start speaking about this and even whereas I have been uh, looking at the political debate, when you are confronted with the situation that people are actually thinking about this, then it's always very difficult. That's why I think we need to be careful also with the law and take into account that we are all human beings with feelings, but people also have the dignity and choices and we must respect it, of course. Yeah, well, I think that what you are mentioning is this issue, which is, as far as I understand, is widely debated by the medical doctors who yeah. say, well, it's very hard to define what does it mean an intolerable suffering in, in that mm -hmm. case, for yeah. example, dementia. Well, well, it's to some extent intolerable, uh, to some extent yeah. not. Well, you, you, you should define it, but, but this thing should be really left to the experts, the people yeah. who might are able to argue about this issue from the purely medical point mm -hmm. of view, to my mind. But it's not like it cannot be only left to experts, only the politicians no. and people have they a right they to have say. To make the they, final exactly, politicians they have, have to, to make, make the, the final decision, decision. but ex they need to listen to experts. And they also, we need to listen to experts and we also need to listen to people, you know, because who is the best expert of your own life than yourself, I think. And then the medical experts, we need to listen to them too. But what people want is also very important. However, uh, I heard uh, in the 
in a in, in couple of months ago, I heard someone saying, a politician saying, well, we need also to accept euthanasia when people are bored and tired of life. And I was like, seriously, so now even instead of giving uh, anti-depression medication or giving a hug, you are going to start uh, prescribing euthanasia, then I think what kind of society are we if we are tired of life and we've, we don't find any other solution? So we need to not give up that soon either. So it's... But is yeah. there something that can it's be done difficult. on the European level? Because six years ago, uh, 14 members of European Parliament actually came with some sort of written uh, declaration uh, talking about the right to, uh, uh, that the right to life uh, in dignity requires the right to die in dignity. And they were voted down. Well, yes, I think, well, 16, you said, out of 750, <laughs> which is probably not a lot. Mm -hmm. And in that sense, I think that the European institutions sometimes do wise when they are avoiding such value-laden questions like euthanasia, like abortion, like the family legislation, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. What we are doing constantly here in the European Parliament is that we are suggesting, we are promoting, exactly. we are recommending, yeah. and so on and so forth. Uh, inviting mm -hmm. member states to yeah. do this or that, but I don't think that it would be a good solution for to uh, adopt universal legislation yeah. for euthanasia in the whole 27 member states. Yeah. So I, it should be different. I agree with my colleague because, you know, in this, within the member states, that we can provide a framework, we can create the, a, a, a space for a conversation and influence that debate, but within every member state there is a different reality. There are countries who have a much more advanced uh, palliative care, who culturally also have a much more open debate or not. So I think we need to let every country go at its own pace. Uh, but then we need to defend, of course, human dignity and see how we can accompany that. But you cannot just go, and it's also a member state competence. Huh? These uh, topics are member state competences. We can add value to the conversation, but I totally agree with my colleague. Let me ask you a personal question. If you know, all things go wrong and we, we, we don't, let's say, Please die. don't ask it. Would you consider yourself asking for euthanasia? Well, I was hoping, I, I was seeing you coming with that question and I think euthanasia has also been very confrontational for me to discuss about, you know, I have two cultures. I, have, I am European, but I also have an African a background. I was born in Africa. Half of my life I grew up there. And it's a very taboo. And the way in which we treat elder people is we treat them like little gods. And, and for me, it was also requiring a lot of adjustment in my brain to understand why people even speak about this. And I did understand. I did uh, understand. And I think right now, well, I hope that uh, when I need to ask myself these kind of questions, I will have my brain working properly so that uh, I can um, I, I can find the right answers for myself. Luckily, right now I'm not I'm not thinking a lot about it, and I hope that those who love me will remember what I would have liked. Because you, maybe one day you don't you are not able to decide for yourself anymore. Uh, then it's important that those surrounding you are able to also uh, help you in that perspective. Mm -hmm. And what about you? Would you consider ever well, having Well, I think that this is a question which just can't be answered on a purely hypothetical level. Mm -hmm. Because, well, right now, of course, I'm, 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 well, I'm, I'm well and, and I feel myself good and so on and so forth. For me, right now, to, to fantasize about the possibility <laughs> of euthanasia would be something kind no, of co counterfactual. Yeah. But at the same time, I think uh, that uh, there is a reason why all the cultures, European, African, uh, American and so on and so forth prohibit suicide. Uh, and I think that this instinct, instinct for life, is extremely important. But at the same time, in a rational, modern, democratic society, there should be a solution what to do with those people who are terminally ill mm -hmm. and are having an intolerable suffering at the moment. Yeah. And I think in that direction, this is where, where, the, where Europe is moving, but it is moving well, uh, not all universally, but member states are adopting legislation. So I think that uh, Latvia should at least adopt a legislation for the passive euthanasia, which we don't have, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and the EU is, well, we are recommending and we are talking about values and so on and so forth, but this should stay uh, member state competence, actually. So, in fact, none of us know the mm. sad news that we are all going to die one day. Yes. That we know for sure. Yeah.
Thank you for this <laughs> difficult discussion. We talked about the right to die in dignity. That is a very difficult question on many different levels. On the cultural level, on religious level, on the level of the healthcare. So, but it's up for the debate. Thank you so much.